What's up guys, Blue Spooky here. Just wanted to remind you guys that if you guys are enjoying these daily uploads, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you end up enjoying this video. It really helps to ensure I can keep making these daily videos for a long time to come. If we could get to around a thousand likes on this video, that would be pretty great. If you guys have any thoughts about the stories in the video, please be sure to leave them in the comments below, as one of my favorite things about making these videos is reading through your guys' thoughts in the comments. Without further ado though, guys, I will let you enjoy the next 40 minutes or so of True Scary Stories, and I will see you guys again at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. There's something very strange that's been happening next door. I live in an apartment building, and things have been getting quite weird. I came home one night recently at about midnight, and was walking down the communal hall. I noticed there was an orange object outside my neighbor's door. I had just come back home from a night out with the friends, so I had had a couple of beers in me. I didn't hesitate to stop what I was doing, and make a closer inspection of this strange object. I guess I'm a somewhat nosy guy when I'm drunk. Who knew, huh? As I looked at it a little bit closer, I noticed the orange object appeared to be some sort of voodoo doll. It didn't look like something someone had dropped there as they were walking down the hall. It looked as if it had been deliberately placed right in front of my neighbor's door. It was lying on its front, with the top of its head facing the door and its limbs outstretched. Another thing I noticed was that the twine or string wrapped around its head had come away. It had this string wrapped all around its body. It looked very out of place and very odd. Even though I had a few beers on board, I knew a weird twine voodoo doll had not been there before when I'd headed out at 7.30. As I looked at it, it seemed to awaken a memory in me. I realized this wasn't the first time I'd seen something sort of weird in front of my neighbor's apartment. I just never made the connection until that night. I'll give you a quick rundown of some of the things I'd seen. There would be dead beetles almost every day, but I never really paid attention to that since we lived out in the sticks. There are bugs everywhere out here. There would occasionally be something that looked like mud or feces outside his door as well. I remember on another occasion seeing something wrapped up in a gray cloth inside a plastic carrier bag. All of that was weird thinking back on it, but it was all isolated and also not really my problem. I put the doll back down and went on my way and headed in to my apartment. A few days turned into weeks, and there had been no other strange items left outside my neighbor's apartment door. I kept an eye out, though. I watched my neighbor's door whenever I passed by. I didn't hear any noise coming from inside my neighbor's apartment during that entire time. I began to get a little concerned, so I stopped another resident to ask him when I had the opportunity. He told me he heard my neighbor had passed away but the truth was unknown. It's still unknown, I guess. Later, a cleaning company came, and they went into the apartment next door. They started to do their work in there. I didn't have many details, obviously. Seemed like the guy who lived next door was not coming back, though. Maybe the rumors were true. Maybe he had passed away. It wasn't until a little later, when I ran into another neighbor that I heard more about what happened. It's not necessarily a satisfactory conclusion, but it was certainly eye-opening to me. A resident who lived a little down the hall, watching the cleaning crew enter my neighbor's apartment, spoke to one of the workers. Apparently, every hole, crack, and crevice in the apartment had been covered up by thick layers of electrical tape. It was as if my neighbor was trying to make his home completely airtight. There was tape over all the ventilation fans, the windows, the drains, and the doors. It was everywhere. Due to fresh air being unable to enter the apartment, 
The cleaning crew said the place was full of black mold. If the rumors are true, then maybe that's where they found his body. I couldn't get any clarification on that, though. One thing that seemed abundantly clear to me was that my neighbor was desperate to keep something out of his apartment. I can't help but think about those strange objects that were always being left outside his door and how it all suddenly stopped once I no longer heard from him anymore. I wonder if it had something to do with that, especially that strange-looking voodoo doll. Back when I was in high school during my freshman and sophomore years, I would ride the bus it picked me up at the corner of my street early in the morning and would drop me off afterwards. I went to an average-sized high school, about 10 minutes away from where I lived. At least, the place seemed average to me. There were about seven or 800 kids combined in all four grades. This is something that happened during my sophomore year. It was a school day just like any other. One class had just ended, and I was going to my final class for the day. As I stood in the hallway near my locker, I talked with some of my friends. I had a decent friend group of several other guys. It was always really crowded in this area between classes. I remember that the first warning bell rang. That meant that you had two minutes to make it to class. The kids started leaving the area but a couple of friends and I stayed. My classroom wasn't really that far off. I remember that one of the guys there was a grade ahead of us. His name was Jake. His brother was Tommy, and Tommy was in my friend group. I think that's why he was there. As I was about to head to class, I heard another sound come over the school speakers. At first, I was thinking, how could the bell ring again so soon? But it wasn't really the same bell sound for when class was starting. It was followed by an announcement over the intercom. We were told that the school was going into a lockdown. All of us should go to our next hour classes immediately. And the teachers should lock the doors and turn off all the lights. There were still a lot of kids hanging around, including the four of my friends. I heard one of them say they were just going to leave. Nobody wanted to sit in the classroom for who knows how long during a lockdown. One of the school exit doors was not that far away. There were already some kids leaving. I saw about ten running for the doors and going outside, and more followed. There was only one class period left for the day, so I decided that I wanted to leave as well. The thing is, I hadn't driven there. That's when Jake asked me if I wanted to leave. They said he would give a ride to anybody that wanted to, because he was leaving right now. As he said this, he started to walk away. Half of my friend group was leaving, and the other half were actually going to their classes. Other kids were also leaving. It became pure chaos. We had to leave fast if we were going to. I saw one of the teachers enter the hallway and start to tell kids to get to their classes. There were less and less kids around by the second. I decided to leave, but by that point, Jake and my other friends had already left. I remember the teacher yelling at everyone to stop leaving. There were around 50 kids that ended up making it out of the school. I was one of them. When I got outside, my friends and I did not do a good job of sticking together. Kids were literally running away to leave. They were going to the parking lots where students parked mostly. Some ran off through the grass towards a nearby neighborhood. The school was in an area that was mostly residential, but there were a few businesses down the road. There were woods and all of the sports fields behind the school. The student parking lot was on the side. When I got outside, I couldn't even see Jake or any of my friends anymore. It was basically chaos. The kids were running everywhere. My teacher took a step out of the school and told us all to come back inside, but nobody listened to him. I figured that Jake and my friends would be in the parking lot, so I ran in that direction. I had to kind of go around the school to get there, though. I wasn't sure which parking lot Jake had parked in, 
so I went to the main one. When I got there, he was nowhere in sight. I hoped I wasn't too late. By now, most kids had made it to their cars if they were leaving. I sprinted for the other parking lot. It was a ways away, though. When I got there, there was nobody. A lot of cars were still there, but I didn't see any students at all. I walked around, hoping that maybe my friends would be in their car and hadn't left yet. Unfortunately, I didn't see them. I realized that they must have left without me. Now, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't go back to the school because it was probably locked, and I wasn't supposed to leave in the first place. I also couldn't go home either. It was too far to walk by myself, and I didn't have a car. I started moving closer to the school, not really knowing exactly what to do. I got to the back door and tried going inside, but of course it was locked just like I figured. I was going back around the parking lot and walked down the sidewalk. As I turned the corner, I saw some guy coming out of the school. I just knew this guy had to be the reason for the lockdown. He was looking over his shoulder, way too old to be a student, and definitely not a teacher either. I was a long ways away from him, so I ducked behind a tree that was nearby. I was just hoping this guy wouldn't see me. For a few seconds, I didn't even bother to look and see where the guy was. I was expecting him to walk in another direction. As I was still behind the tree though, I heard him walking closer to me. I ran from behind my hiding place, out into the woods, which was about 20 feet away. There was no question the guy had seen me running into the woods. I was hoping he wouldn't follow me. I got inside and ran about 20 feet deep in. I then ducked down and tried to hide. I had no clue why the school had been locked down up until that point. I had been more concerned about leaving with my friends. After seeing that suspicious guy leaving the school though, I realized there might actually be some danger. For a few seconds I didn't hear anything until I heard footsteps in the grass right outside the woods I was in. I couldn't take it any longer. I got up and started running. I ran through the woods and to the left. I could hear the man following after me. I just wanted to get the hell out of there. After running for two or three minutes, I reached the edge of the woods, kind of near a street. I walked through the grass to the sidewalk and then ran down it. I kept going until I reached a gas station. When I got there, I asked the employee working if I could borrow his phone to call my mom. I told him how my school had been locked down and everything. He let me, and I was able to wait there until my mom came and picked me up. Luckily, she worked not too far away. I was able to leave without a problem. I didn't get in trouble for leaving school early either. The lockdown ended up lasting the entire class period. In fact, students had been kept there after the regularly scheduled time school was supposed to get out. It turned out the man I saw entering the school had been trying to abduct his daughter. It was a situation where he was divorced and didn't have custody of her. He was also drunk and threatened to kill a custodian when asked to leave. I'm not sure why he came over to me when I was in the woods though. It was a really scary situation for me. I was at home for three days for a mini stay-at-home vacation from work. I live in a very rural area, about an hour away from the city. Honestly, I hadn't really taken these days off for any particular reason. I guess I was just feeling like I needed a little bit of a break. It was on my very first day off as I stayed home and watched TV, amongst doing some other small things around the house when, around dinner time, a knock came from the front door. I sat up from the couch and looked up at the clock, seeing it was around 7 p.m. Well, it was quite strange for anyone to be at my house in general, but given the time of day as well, it was even more suspicious. I walked up to the door and cracked it open a bit. There was a man on the doorstep, smiling at me. He looked just like any other normal guy, no special features or anything that stood out about him. 
What do you need? I asked, looking around behind him and noticing no car or truck anywhere in sight. The man maintained his smile as he went through a whole scenario he was in just a few minutes ago. He said he was on the road that connected to my driveway when someone slammed into his car and drove off, leaving him stranded there. He stumbled around looking for help until he found me. That was the way he described it, of course. Just from looking at him, things didn't seem to add up, though. My driveway was quite far away from the road. The chances he got into an accident right by the entrance was almost zero on such an empty lane. I told him I'd call the police for him if he'd like, but the man declined immediately. He said he wanted to borrow my phone to call his wife. It took me a few moments to think about what to do. I was unsure about the situation. It made me nervous to say no to him, though. I said I would call the police and that was it. The man's smile immediately went away. Don't worry about it, he said, and walked away from the porch. I closed the door and looked out my window. The man walked down my driveway and disappeared into the darkness. After a moment, I called the police anyway, just to be safe. Twenty minutes later, I got a call back from them. They said there were no signs of any crashes on the road at all. I stayed up late that night, looking out all the windows and being very paranoid. Once it got to around 12, though, I was too tired to stay up any longer. I went upstairs to my bedroom, got ready, got in bed, and fell fast asleep. I remember waking up frantically, not understanding why. It was like I'd heard something in my sleep, but I hadn't quite woken up fast enough to comprehend what it was. I looked over, feeling my heart race. It was about 3 a.m., my clock said. I got up from my bed and walked over to the door. I listened out for any sounds in the rest of the house. It was mostly quiet, but I could make out a slight rustling sound coming from somewhere outside. I carefully walked down the stairs, trying to check out what was going on. At first, I thought it was probably just a bush brushing against the house, but as I got to the downstairs hallway, I realized that whatever this sound was, it was going along the edge of my home, toward the front door. I felt my heart start racing as I tried to reassure myself that everything was okay. Then the rustling stopped, and only a minute later, there was a knock at the door. I stood still at the end of the hallway and stared at the front door, terrified of whoever was out there. After a few seconds, I moved away and up to a small window on the side of the house. It had a view of the porch area through the blinds. I could see two men in dark clothing, both holding something in their hands. They looked to be weapons of some kind. My eyes widened in fear as I backed away. I quietly walked back up to my room. More knocking echoed throughout my house as I called the police and locked myself inside. I stayed on the phone as the knocks turned into clanging thuds. I knew immediately it was exactly what I'd feared. They were trying to break my door down. Hit after hit rang out non-stop for five minutes as they banged on the door, nearly shaking the whole house. The operator on the phone finally said an officer was pulling up to my home and that's when all the banging stopped. When the cop pulled up, he said he didn't see any men at my door, though. They must have run off just before he could see them. The door was barely hanging on. The wood was bent in and splintered, with only the lock still in place. I was lucky the police were able to show up quick enough, but I guess I was also smart to have not helped that one man. I'm assuming that if I had done so, it would only have accelerated their plans to do whatever it was they were trying to do to me. Even today, I still worry about them coming back sometime. I'm a part-time worker. I make a living working for a security company. I'm on their books as an agency worker. 
so it's not really steady work. I do well enough not to complain, though. On the night this happened, I was sent out to work overnight for a company I hadn't worked for before. I didn't love the sound of the gig. I can admit now I was a little bit reluctant to even go, but it was part of my job, so I did. I set off that evening to spend the night working the night shift. I arrived at the address and found my way to the company. It was basically a massive warehouse. My job that night was to guard the warehouse. I was a little surprised they had hired a security guard to do this gig, because, I mean, all I had to do was make sure no one broke in. It seemed they were really, really worried about theft. I guess it made some kind of sense then. You don't really want an old guy with nothing more than a flashlight torch guarding the place from thieves. Well, my evening got a little bit easier, I thought to myself, as I was shown around. I was told that all I had to do was visit some checkpoints regularly at the designated times. When I wasn't doing that, I was basically free to do whatever I pleased, even take a nap if I so wanted. I was fine with that arrangement. I brought my laptop along and had plenty of interesting material to watch on that while no one was around. Yeah, some top shelf stuff if you get me. I thought I was all set to have a fun and carefree night, but that changed at around 1am. That was when something strange started happening. I wasn't new to strange things going on at night. I mean, I am a security guard after all. I've got some other stories, but most of them can be explained logically. What I mean is that I'm used to the things that go bump in the night now. Creaks and bangs and weird sounds don't really make me jump much. When I heard something more than the usual evening noises I would hear, I realized something was different about this place. It wasn't just the noise. There was an atmosphere here. I felt cold all of a sudden. I even started shaking because it was so cold. It was supposed to be summer. I spotted a thick jacket in the restroom earlier that night and went to retrieve it. I guess it belonged to someone who worked here. The sudden cold snap was weird, but I warmed up a little with the jacket on. I decided to start one of my patrols a couple minutes earlier. I figured that walking around would keep me warm. There were security cameras set up in the warehouse, and I knew that someone from my firm got fired for slacking off because one of the clients reviewed the security footage and found out he didn't do anything on the night he was supposed to be working. Yeah, I wanted to be diligent. I got moving and left the break room. I went through the office area into the warehouse. I only got a few steps in, when suddenly it felt as if my heart was about to stop in my chest. I sensed something. If you want to laugh at me for that, you can go ahead and laugh but I was completely petrified by this feeling. I hadn't seen anything. I was just so suddenly frightened by something unseen, like an atmosphere of whatever could be in the dark of that warehouse. It was the first time in my life I've ever felt warning signals like that. I'm not the type to believe in paranormal stuff or pick up spiritual vibes from a place, but that night I had the feeling I was not alone. I had my flashlight with me as I headed to the door at the back of the warehouse. There, next to these big warehouse doors, was a smaller tradesman entrance. I had to open a shutter and head in through it to continue with my rounds. I could see the light of my flashlight shaking across the walls and floor as I scanned around. I made a determined effort to keep my arms still, so I pointed the flashlight at the wall. I focused on a single spot. I was pleased that I'd done the whole mind over matter thing. I resumed scanning the light over the warehouse, but stopped suddenly. In the area where my light was shining, it was clearly something there. It looked like some kind of shape, something that was solid and moving in the depths of the warehouse. There was something there. To my own surprise, I began to follow the light of my torch. I was terrified. That was the first time in my life that I realized that when people are truly frightened by something, they don't panic necessarily. 
On the contrary, they might just remain calm, extremely calm. I was able to think clearly and rationally, and no matter how I looked at it, I felt as if I was doomed to continue that night. Even though I was a little nervous, I knew that if I didn't finish my job, I would not get paid, and it was as simple as that. I definitely wouldn't be looked on all that favorably by my boss either, the person who hands out the jobs. I decided to push forward. I had seen something in the darkness of that warehouse, and it was my job to go out in search of it and find out exactly what it was. So, that's exactly what I did. I was praying to myself it was simply a cat or something, but I didn't know. I tried to get a hold of myself as my mind started racing. I headed to the back of the warehouse to the location where I'd seen that shadowed shape. I don't know how it happened, but somehow I'd managed to lose track of them. I didn't like that. I had to know where they'd gone. I went further and further, ignoring the patrol route altogether. I was shining my torch all over, and I caught a glimpse of that shadow up ahead. I continued to follow. It was just another job, I kept telling myself. Before long, I found myself turning and heading down a passageway, with no exit at the other end. I had just walked myself down a dead end. If someone came at me while I was there, I would have no place to run or hide. I wanted to light up the whole place but it was too dark, and the flashlight didn't cover enough area. The sweat began pouring down my forehead. I was half bracing myself to be attacked from the darkness. I called out to whoever was there. Look, I'm just on patrol here, okay? I don't want any trouble from you, and you don't want any trouble from me, alright? I said words to that effect. Thinking back, it makes me laugh, to be honest. Something unbelievable happened next. I was staring at the back wall at the dead-end part of the warehouse. That's when I got a good look for the first time. Whatever was there was crouched down to the floor. It was tall, slim, a human-like shadow that loomed in the back of the passageway. They were crouched down, clearly ready to pounce in a matter of seconds. I was no longer alone. I got the sense that whoever this was really wanted me to get out of there. It was the strongest feeling of you're not supposed to be here that I've ever felt in my life. I didn't want to deal with that. I slowly backed away and went back the way I came. As soon as I was out of that passageway, I turned around 180 and ran for it. I ran back through the little office to the safety of the break room and immediately turned on my laptop. When 3am came around, I couldn't bring myself to go back down there and do another round, let alone fumble around with the doors. I didn't care if I got fired. I was not walking around down there with that person. I didn't care if I got fired. I was not walking around down there with a dangerous shadow person thing. I valued my life way more than my job. I ended up skipping that 3am patrol, as well as the 5am one. I watched material on my laptop all night. I couldn't think of anything else that could so easily distract me from the fear I felt down there in that hallway. Like an idiot, I just tried to distract myself. I waited for the morning to come, and as soon as 7am rolled around, I was out of there. I imagined that I would be getting a complaint or even called into the manager's office and given my marching orders. I spent weeks dreading the phone call that would come, but it never did. No complaints were lodged, and I kept my job as well. It was kind of weird. I mean, why wouldn't they complain about a guy who didn't do the job, who just sat there all night watching movies? I don't know. Just seemed a little weird. Anyway, I'll never work in that warehouse again. That's for sure. I ended up asking a couple of colleagues if they'd ever patrolled that warehouse. Some said they had. I asked them if they'd had any experiences similar to mine while on the job. To my surprise, everyone said that nothing like that happened when they worked there. The five security guards had no issues on any of their shifts. In the end, I got a reputation of being a scaredy cat who watches adult movies at work. Yeah, they all thought I was a creep. It wasn't long after that that I decided to leave.
I guess don't tell your colleagues too much is the lesson here. A bit of a strange ending. I'm a former movie theater employee. The one I worked at I would describe as very typical. It was near a shopping center, about 10 minutes away from where I lived. At the time, I was a high school senior and 18 years old. One night, I was working there until 11 p.m. I believe it was a weekend, and I know it had been pretty busy. As it got to be a little bit later at night, though, things got much quieter. I'm not sure exactly what time it was, but I do know that one of the theaters ended its last movie for the night. I was sent to go down and clean everything out. It was about 30 minutes after the movie had ended. The theater wasn't all that big, so it probably wouldn't take me all that long. Usually, there would be some trash left behind, popcorn on the floor, lots of things like that. When I entered the empty theater, I started cleaning up, first closer to the screen. It was a little messier than I thought it would be. I worked my way up, and about ten minutes later, I was looking down at the floor and cleaning, when suddenly I saw something hit the ground right in front of me. I saw it was a cup that appeared to be empty. I had no idea where it had come from. I looked up towards the top of the theater, but I didn't see anybody there. I knew for sure that somebody else was in there with me though, and had just thrown that at me. I called out, asking who was there, but got no response. I turned and started to walk up the aisle toward the top of the theater. When I made it about halfway up, I saw a man suddenly stand up and appear from behind the second to last row. He had a strange looking beard and long disheveled hair. Before I had the chance to do or say anything, I saw him wind up and chuck something at me again. I ducked down as what appeared to be a water bottle filled with liquid flew past my head. I stood up and asked the guy what he was doing. I kind of thought he was just joking around at first. He was standing up and facing me, but still didn't say anything. I saw that he had an angry look on his face, and he did not seem to be joking around at all. I told him that we were closing soon, and I needed to clean up so he had to go. The man's response was to start moving closer to me, then, without saying a single word, begin charging at me at full speed. I knew nothing else but to run away from this deranged man. I sprinted down the stairs, out of the theater, and back into the hallway. When I got out there, I noticed the man didn't leave the theater. He was still inside. Well, obviously, this would pose a problem with me being able to clean it. I walked down the hallway back toward the front, till I found a co-worker. It was a guy named Cal. After I told him about the guy, we decided to go back together. I felt it would be much easier for the two of us to get the guy to leave, rather than just me. If he still refused, we would probably need to call the police on him. We both entered, but didn't go in very far. We remained a few feet away from the door, just in case the guy tried anything. We couldn't see much at all, but I was pretty sure the guy was still in there somewhere. We yelled out that he had to go now, and if he didn't leave, we would call the police. At first, it was just silence. Then suddenly, we heard a noise coming from above us. I looked up at the railing from the stairs of the aisle that was above us, and directly to the left, I saw the man. A bunch of popcorn fell down on us. He dumped it over the rails right onto us. We both left the theater and called the police. We waited by the entrance for the next 10 minutes or so, and the guy didn't attempt to leave. When the police got there, we told them where the guy was. It took them a while, but eventually they were able to escort him out. I'm not sure what exactly his problem was, but the guy clearly had some issues. I'm just glad he didn't actually cause any harm to anyone. Later on, I found out that he'd never even bought a ticket to a movie. He had snuck in toward the end of a film and stayed there towards the back for whatever reason. When the movie was over, he continued to stay, 
until I went in to clean and he attacked me. I worked at the theater for a few months after that, before quitting altogether. This happened when I was 18, making the road trip from my hometown to my new college. I had all my stuff shoved into the trunk and back seat of my cheap SUV. This was not only my first long road trip alone, but was also going to be my first time being away from my family for an extended period of time. My nerves were reasonably high. Anyway, the directions I was taking said it was about 600 miles total, which I'd split into two days of driving. I was taking whatever route the maps had me take, and it estimated I'd make it to the hotel at about 11 p.m. at night. With possible traffic, gas stops, and getting food, though, I thought I'd likely get there much later. By 7, the sun was fully down, and most of the cars were gone, too. Every once in a while, a car would pass me by, and I'd see their headlights slowly fade away in front of me. For most of the drive, though, it was just me. This actually made me really tired and bored. At around 10 p.m., I decided to stop at a gas station before making the final stretch of the drive. About 10 minutes later, I exited the road and entered a gas station. Being so far out, this wasn't a town or anything. It was literally just a gas station with two pumps and a tiny convenience store. I didn't see any other cars on the road or in the lot, not even any lights from any nearby buildings in the distance. I pulled right up to a pump and got out to start topping off my tank. As I looked around, I almost got jump scared by a guy walking up to me. In comparison to myself, he was much older, probably in his 50s if I had to guess. He honestly looked homeless, but regardless, being approached out here wasn't something I was expecting. His strange-looking smile didn't make me feel any more comfortable at all. Hi, do you need something? I said, hoping he wouldn't come any closer. The man stopped a few feet away from my car and looked around almost cautiously. He responded to me, Take the exit back onto the highway. I looked at him confused, not sure if I was understanding him right. He pointed behind me at the exit I came from and repeated himself over and over. After a second, I said okay, and the man walked off. I was still really confused. The exit I came from that he wanted me to take again was a one-way road. By his logic, he wanted me to drive on the wrong side of the road and do a U-turn back onto the highway. That didn't make any sense. I looked out at the entrance road, the obvious one I was supposed to take. There were no signs of any construction or anything blocking it. It just looked like an empty ramp back onto the highway. As I put the pump back and got in my car, I glanced over at the man, who was now just sitting against the side of the convenience store. The more I thought about it, though, the more crazy that man seemed, just to be sitting out here in the middle of nowhere saying nonsense. I thought maybe this was some kind of trap or something. I went with my instinct and drove out of the lot and toward the entrance to the highway. As I merged onto it, I realized pretty much all the streetlights were turned out. I slowed down, thinking this may be a construction zone or something. I kept my eyes focused on the road directly ahead, making sure to be cautious of anything. As I made my way through the unlit road, I saw the brief outline of a figure to my left before a pickup truck came out of nowhere and stopped right in front of my car. Every door opened as four men jumped out of the truck and started running up to my car, holding weapons of all sorts. Metal bats, machetes, knives... They didn't even have anything covering their faces. They just had this emotionless gaze, like they felt nothing of what they were doing. I quickly started backing up as they got just a few feet away from my windows. Once I got far enough back, I saw the outline of dozens of people coming out of the shadows along the road. 
A few even tried chasing my car as I frantically reversed out of there. As soon as I could, I turned around and sped off. I called 911 once I felt I was safe, but for some reason I never got a call back. No update on it at all, almost like they didn't even bother to check. Ironically enough, it seemed the creepy old guy at the gas station really had tried to prevent me from getting caught up in that mess. I was incredibly lucky to get out of that with my life, as I have no idea what that was or what they were all planning to do. What is up guys, Blue Spooky here. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you feel so inclined. If you have any feedback for me as well, be sure to leave that in comments below the video. If you guys have a story you'd like to send in, or if you'd like to contact me for any reasons, there will be links to my social media in the description below the video, including my Facebook, Gmail, and Twitter accounts. Go ahead and send me a message on any of those, and I'll try to get to you as soon as possible. If you do decide to send in a story, please be sure to include in the tagline what the name of the story is if it has one, what type of story it is if it has one, and how you'd like to be credited in the description below the video. Please make sure to include as much detail as you feel comfortable with and try to use as much proper grammar as possible to make sure you have the highest chance of appearing in a future video. Overall, I think that's pretty much it for now, guys. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day.